Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We're here today to talk about AMD's Radeon RX 580 graphics card um, and uh, going to go over what it does performance wise and what it means to you. So first things first, let's be very upfront of here. The uh, the RX 580 is essentially an RX 480 with a couple of minor minor tweaks, right? So AMD uh, was was kind of you know very much forthcoming with this information. They weren't trying to say that the RX 580 was an upgrade for people who have RX 480s or anything in the 500 series related to the 400 series, and instead that the 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 RX 500s are meant for the same audience that the RX 400s were targeted at. So if you have a two-year-old graphics card or more, uh, you want to do VR gaming, you want to do uh, 4K uh, video playback, uh, and those types of things, this is still that upgrade path for you. So this is basically a drop-in replacement for the RX 400 series, and in this case, this video, the RX uh, 480. So the uh, it is not Vega. It is still Polaris. It is the same GPU with a couple of tweaks. You know they talk about um, you know some improvements to the 14 nanometer FinFET process technology at the foundry that this takes advantage of. Uh, more aggressive tuning on the GPU for higher clock speeds. Uh, they do have enhanced idle and multi monitor uh, power states. So uh, you'll see you know eight. Maybe eight, maybe five watts less power being consumed at the idle state, especially if you have multi monitors, multiple monitors connected. Um, and they have given headroom to the board vendors, MSI, Asus, everybody, you know, uh, Sapphire, those guys, to expand on their designs through power consumption, which we'll discuss in a second. So even though um, AMD might call this Polaris 20 XTX or whatever you want to call it, it is still the same GPU. Make no bones about it, right? The RX 580 still has 2,304 CUDA, CUDA cores, GPU cores. Uh, it still has 144 texture units, 32 ROPs, available in 4 gig and 8 gig capacities, same 8 gigahertz memory clock, 256 bit memory bus, 256 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. None of that changes. <clears throat> what does change is the clock speed. The reference boost clock, which is what AMD advertises, is 1,340 megahertz on the RX 580. It was 1,266 megahertz on the RX 480. So you're only talking about a difference of about 80 megahertz across the board. So, um, but what that does, what they, what they also change, the other kind of interesting spec is, if you remember the RX 480 was rated at 150 watt TDP, although it never really hit that, to be fair. It always kind of was overdrawing on multiple instances. There was a whole big kerfuffle around that. The TDP of the reference spec RX 580 is 185 watts. So 35 watts higher, um, for 80 megahertz, and in reality, I think much of that 35 watts is just kind of covering their ground for how they underestimated the TDP or underreported the TDP of the RX 480. So uh, that's that's kind of where that comes from. Now, the uh, model that we got sent was the MSI Gaming X, uh, one of their top-end kind of overclocked spec models. And you can see the card here. It looks very much like an MSI design. We're not going to go over a lot of uh, stuff about the connectivity or whatever because the RX 580 designs are going to be very similar to the RX 40 designs. They're just all custom, no reference card options here. This does have an 8-pin power connector, which, if you remember back to the 480 power issue, was part of the problem. The reference designs only had a 6-pin power. It couldn't draw enough power from the motherboard and the 6-pin to really be um, in spec. So with the 5, with the, with the 8-pin, Theoretically, we have up to 225 watts of thermal headroom or of power draw on these graphics cards, and these board partners are going to be allowed to take advantage of that. Um, one of the uh, interesting things we saw in our power consumption testing uh, is that this model, it's overclocked. Um, I want to say it's clock speeds. Let me double check here as well. The... Um, it's above the 580 reference, and in fact, we're at 1,393 megahertz. So this is 53 megahertz higher boost clock or turbo clock um, over the reference spec. Not a huge amount, um, but it is, you know, there, there's something there. The power consumption is pretty high, though. We tested this uh, MSI RX 580 against this Asus Strix RX 480 graphics card, which in and of itself was overclocked by about the same amount over the 480 reference specs, and against this EVGA GTX 1060 uh, SC model, uh, SSC model, that is overclocked as well. And again, this is, you know, uh, about the same, this is actually the lowest overclocked model 
from EVGA for the GTX 1060 six gigabyte graphics card. There are a couple of models above that as well. So we're, even though I normally like to do reference specs, we didn't get any reference cards for the 580, so we kind of went with overclocked across the board, but out of the box overclocked from these retail partners. Now, that being said, uh, the MSI RX 580 used about 200 watts, just a little bit over 200 watts in our actual gameplay, directly measuring at the card level, right, through some through our, our power testing and hardware configuration. So 200 watts through that. The RX 480 was closer to 170, 175 watts. So the 580 is using 25, 30 watts more power than the RX 480. However, the GTX 1060 is clearly showing the power efficiency and architectural advantages that NVIDIA has with Pascal. It was only drawing about 120 watts of power in Rise of the Tomb Raider at 2560 by 1440. Um, and we did the same testing in The Witcher 3, and again, we were over 200, maybe 205, 210 watts on the 580, another 160 to 170 to 180 watts on the 480, and then about 125 watts on this. So an 80 watt differential between the 1060 6 gig and the RX 580 is a substantial amount, right? You're talking, um, you know, that's that's lower lower voltages, lower fan speeds, lower clock speeds, lower power cons or not lower clock speeds, lower power consumption, less heat in your system. There's a lot of things that kind of go into that uh, if you care about power consumption, thermals, noise, that type of stuff. Not saying that the MSI card was loud. It's just if you're looking at what kind of platforms does this. GPU and infrastructure allow you to design for the the Nvidia card is still by far the most the most efficient option. If you look at performance uh, in general, the RX 580 is anywhere from two to six, maybe seven or eight percent faster than the RX 480, depending on the specific tests. We went through six games at 2560 and at 1080p resolutions. And you're basically looking at the clock speed delta between our ASUS RX 480 and our MSI 580. Um, nothing substantially here, no memory changes, no architectural, no compute unit changes, so nothing in terms of IPC differences, simply a clock speed uh, differential. The uh, comparison to the GTX 1060 6 gig is a more interesting discussion, right? In GTA 5, for example, the GTX 1060 is 18 to 19 percent faster than the RX 580. But that's the worst case for the RX 580. If you look at a game like Hitman, actually, uh, running in DX12, the RX 580 is 2 to 5% faster than the GTX 1060 6 gig. Um, in general, I would say the we had two uh, of our games that we tested. One showed a performance matching between the 580 and the GTX 1060, and one showed the, the the RX 580 a little bit faster. That was Hitman. But the other ones, if you look at uh, the if you look at uh, uh, GTA and Dirt Rally and Fallout 4, those gave the advantage to the GTX 1060 by uh, you know eight ten percent. I would say is kind of the 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 average for those particular tests. So it begs to reason um, based on pricing, which is essentially identical between the 580s and the 480s. Uh, this, this is a $245, $250 MSRP. The GTX 1060 we uh, were using for testing was selling for $249 as, at the time we wrote this review. So there are competitive products. And my summation is that from a performance standpoint, performance per dollar, the NVIDIA card is still uh, the leader. The difference is not as dramatic as it was with the 480 because the 580 does get a little bit of that performance delta back, uh, but it's still there. Performance efficiency, the NVIDIA card is still the clear favorite, um, but the, uh, you know, there, for people who want an AMD Radeon graphics card and who are upgrading from two-year-old graphics you know, solutions that they might have now, the 580 is, is the new better option, the new best option from AMD. It is not Vega, it's not kind of fundamentally changing the landscape of the mainstream GPU market, but in terms of getting slightly better options at slightly better price points um, across a span of, uh, of time and place, that's going to be uh, the one for you. So uh, I do have more details and thoughts in our story at PCPro.com, so I encourage you guys to go check that out. Uh, we'll have power consumption, performance data, and a little bit more on kind of my thoughts and theories on what works for the RX 580 and what doesn't, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash PCPer.